In this video, we are going to talk about the most important trace mineral for your heart as well as blood vessels. We are talking about copper. Whenever we talk about ischemic heart diseases, we often ignore the importance of trace mineral in correcting heart disease. This trace mineral deserves our attention because it has the capacity of correcting a lot of heart diseases. Copper is the trace mineral that can control a lot of risk factors involved in causing heart diseases like hypertension which is high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high uric acid. So all these things can be seen if you have copper deficiency. So a copper deficient state makes you more susceptible to heart diseases because of increasing risk factors. Copper is extremely important to keep your blood vessels in a healthy condition. We know that there are a lot of enzymes present in our body that depend on copper to function at the optimal level. Now, there is an enzyme lysyl oxidase which depends on copper to function properly. What it does is that it oxidizes four lysyl residues to form desmosine. Now desmosine is found in elastin protein which can be seen in skin, lungs and your blood vessels. And the chief function is to maintain the tensile strength and provide elasticity to the blood vessels. So it's very important to prevent things like aneurysm. Because if you are copper deficient, what happens that the blood vessels can start to become weakened and it can start to balloon out and dilatation of the blood vessels just like if you keep on pushing air inside the balloon at one time it may burst so same thing happens with blood vessels that it keeps on ballooning and it can burst and this is very fatal condition and this most likely happens in iota so you can prevent aneurysm of blood vessels by making sure that you're not deficient in copper copper is also very important to help in production of blood because Another important enzyme, ALA synthase, which helps in synthesis of heme, depends on copper. So if you are copper deficient, you can become anemic. And what is the problem with anemia is that it can increase the work overload of your heart. And over a period of time, it can weaken the heart muscle. Copper is also very important for ATP synthase. This enzyme is necessary for ATP production, energy production. So in a copper deficient state, what happens is that your heart muscle cannot uptake energy. So that can greatly affect the contractility of your heart muscle. And if this goes for a long period of time, what it can lead to is cardiomyopathy. So this is very... So your heart muscle can become enlarged and the function of your heart muscle can decline. And it can also affect the ejection fraction. You are not deficient in copper so that you prevent things like cardiomyopathy, rupture of the blood vessels and make sure that you are not anemic and all these things can be prevented by a single trace mineral that is copper. Copper is also going to decrease the overall inflammation inside your body and it's also going to bring down the advanced glycation end products formation like HbA1c, fructosamine. It is seen that when there is increased generation of advanced glycation end products in presence of copper deficiency, what happens that it injures the blood vessels the endothelium of your blood vessels and it can subsequently lead to inflammation and it can later on cause atherosclerosis and blockage of the blood vessels and heart attack so it's very very important to make sure you're not deficient in copper to decrease the formation of advanced glycation end products if you are born with certain medical condition like high cholesterol familial history of high cholesterol then you have to be extra careful here because copper can be a life-saving nutrient for you it is seen that if you are copper deficient and you have high LDL, then the chances of LDL getting oxidized is very much high. And we know that oxidized LDL can cause atherosclerosis. So the lipid hypothesis of heart holds true only in a copper deficient state, not otherwise. So copper is extremely important to prevent LDL oxidation and it also increases your HDL. So it's important to keep your arteries in a healthy condition. Now the question arises, why would someone be deficient in copper? The most common cause as of now is high consumption of high sucrose diet, especially table sugar. So table sugar consumption has increased significantly over the years, both in developed and developing countries. And this is the major cause of copper deficiency because it inhibits intestinal absorption of copper and increases the excretion of copper in urine. So you urinate a copper rich urine which of course you do not want remember that it's not just about eating but it's about absorbing as well as reducing urine reducing the excretion of nutrients through urine so you want to preserve the nutrients inside your body so in order to 
absorb nutrients you have to keep a digestive system healthy and you have to avoid three w white flour white sugar and white salt these three they they increase the urinary excretion of nutrients so you start to urinate too much trace mineral and electrolyte through urine if you consume too much of these three w's so it's very important that you avoid table sugar eliminate table sugar completely from your diet if you want to correct all these things and if you want to stay away from the ischemic heart diseases now the rda is suboptimal why because before 1980 when there was no specific rda it was suggested that you should take 2 to 3 mg of copper per day but after 1980 based on one single study that took conducted on 11 healthy individual they set rda as 0.9 mg per day and in my opinion this is suboptimal you need more than 0.9 mg per day you need at least 2 to 3 mg per day because there are a lot of enzymes that depend on copper and to function at the optimal level just not to function but at the optimal level at the highest level you have to make sure that you get around 2 to 3 mg per day also remember that your body is not a test tube it does not work in isolation it's a complex system and every nutrient every electrolyte has to be in a state of equilibrium so you have to pay close attention to its other partner that is zinc so zinc copper so you have to pay close attention to this combination because if you consume too much zinc through food or supplement you can create a copper deficiency and that can subsequently affect the functioning of the most powerful antioxidant superoxide dismutase the superoxide dismutase is the most powerful antioxidant that decreases the overall inflammation inside your body and it is seen that in people suffering from diabetic neuropathy their superoxide dismutase level is very low and in such people it is seen that copper supplement given for 8 weeks remarkably improved their condition that is diabetic neuropathy because it increases superoxide dismutase so the purpose of this video was to give due importance to the nutritional approach in correcting medical condition like heart disease remember this thing that if you consume junk food it creates nutritional deficiency because junk foods are loaded with uh, table sugar as well as unhealthy fat artificially created trans fat and those things they compete with omega 3 for absorption they also increase the urinary excretion of nutrients so you become deficient and if this continues it will cause a low grade inflammation and if this go goes on and on it will lead to chronic inflammation and that is expressed as disease like type 2 diabetes hypertension neurodegenerative diseases so pay close attention to what you are putting inside your mouth you do not want to eat junk food especially if you have a familial risk as well as if you have crossed certain age that is after 40 years you have to be very much careful about not damaging your cardiovascular system.